Question six, the last of these kind of teaching problems of the practice problems for the Praxis 5165 test. I hate these teaching problems. I'll be excited when this one's done. So for this question, what we're dealing with are linear equations, which hopefully you're fairly comfortable with. In case you're not, quick review on linear equations. Linear equations are equations of the form y equals mx plus b, where m represents the slope, which is just the change in the y coordinate divided by the change in the x coordinate. In other words, y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1, where the point x1, y1 and the point x2, y2 are any two points on the line. M is one of the two parameters in the linear equation. B is the other one. B is the y-intercept, which is just the point 0 comma B on the line. In other words, it's the y-coordinate when the x-coordinate equals 0. It's worth pointing out that there must be such a point unless you have a vertical line. If you have a vertical line, you can't write it in this format. It's just x equals some number. Sure, I guess I can write that down. If you have x equals some number, that's the vertical line passing through the point that number comma 0. That's kind of the special case. Typically, we're not talking about vertical lines because typically we're talking about linear functions, which is the case here. Vertical lines don't represent functions, so we don't have to worry about those. All that to say, a linear function is of the form f of x equals mx plus b. m is the slope, b is the y-intercept. In this specific problem, we're told that the student is told that this table represents a linear function. So we don't have to worry about proving that this is a linear function. That may make a more interesting question. The reason this table represents a linear function is because each time the value of x increases by one, the value of y changes by a constant amount, five in this case. That constant amount that it changes by is the slope represented by the letter m. So if we weren't told that this table represents a linear function, we could show that it represents a linear function by noting that constant change in the y coordinate. But in this case, we don't even have to do that. Well, I'm here, it might be worth pointing out that if the values of y didn't increase by five each time x increased by one, but instead got multiplied by five each time x increased by one. So instead of six, 11, 16, and 21, maybe they were, I don't know, six and then 30 and then 150 and then 750, hypothetically. If these were the y coordinates, they're not, but if they were, we wouldn't have a linear function. We'd have what's called an exponential function. Instead of being of the form y equals mx plus b, it would be of the form y equals a times b to the x power. And the b here represents how much the y coordinate gets multiplied by each time x increases by one. So in this case, the b would be equal to five. Don't confuse the b here with the b here. They're very different. This b is the y-intercept. Confusingly, this a down here is the y-intercept. The m up here is the slope, which is kind of like the b down here, which doesn't have a name. The b up here is the y-intercept, which is a lot like the a down here, which is the y-intercept. In either case, it's the y-coordinate when the x-coordinate equals zero. Oh, right, because any number to the zero power is equal to one, informally speaking. Anyways, all of that is way beyond what you need for this problem, but I thought it was worth pointing out because I could see each of these types of functions showing up on this test. Back to this specific problem. The student is tasked with coming up with the equation of the linear function that this table here represents. To figure out the equation of the linear function, you need to know the two parameters, the m and the b, the slope and the y-intercept. Three different ways that students could figure those things out. What we're supposed to do is determine whether any or all or some of those three methods are legitimate, are mathematically valid strategies. So let's go through them one by one. This first one. Each time the value of x goes up by 1, the value of y goes up by 5, so the slope is 5. One interpretation of the slope is, is just how much the y-coordinate increases by each time the x-coordinate increases by 1. The student's using that interpretation to figure out that m is 5. Great. Halfway home. All we need to know now is the value of b, the y-intercept. Recall that the value of b, the y-intercept, is just the point 0 comma b on the line. In other words, it's the y-coordinate when the x-coordinate equals 0. Unfortunately, that's not given in this table here, but fortunately, if the student is the slightest bit clever, they can extrapolate to figure out what y would be if x were equal to zero. If y increases by five each time x increases by one, then y decreases by five each time x decreases by one. So if we decreased one more, our x value would be zero and our y value would be one. Because the point zero, one is on the line, the value of b is equal to one, what the student said is, and if x goes down by 1 from 1 to 0, then y will go down by 5 from 6 to 1. So the y-intercept is 1. We know that m is 5 and b is 1. 
equations y equals 5x plus 1. Perfect. Student A came up with a mathematically valid strategy for finding the equation of the linear function. What about student B? Student B starts with the equation y equals mx plus b, great. Then looked at the value of x and saw that it kept increasing by 1, and looked at the value of y and saw that it kept increasing by 5. So m equals 5, great. Essentially identical to what student A did to find the slope. If I were to find B, they took a different approach. They took a more algebraic approach. They took this equation y equals mx plus b, and said that if m equals 5, then we can think of the equation as y equals 5x plus b, where we still don't yet know the parameter b. However, this equation has to be true for every point on the line. So we can take any x, y pair, it doesn't matter which one, and plug them in for x and y, and we have to get a true equation. This student chose 1 and 6 as the x, y pair to plug in, which is as good as anything, I suppose. If we change the y's into 6's, and change all the x's into 1's, we get this equation, which we know must be true. Clean things up a little bit, we get 6 is equal to 5 plus b. Subtract 5 from both sides, we see that b is equal to 1. The student now knows m and b, so they know the equation of the linear function. b is a mathematically valid strategy for finding the equation of this function. What about c? I kind of wish they would have put a strategy that's not valid in here for C so we could kind of get an idea of what such a thing would look like, but they didn't. They gave us a good answer for C as well. For this function, I saw that you can always multiply the value of x by 5 and then add 1 to get the value of y. So the equation is y equals 5x plus 1. Sure, you might argue that this is a strategy that might not work super well with numbers a little bit more difficult, but for numbers this simple, it works out perfectly fine. The y coordinate is always 5 times the x coordinate plus 1 more. We can directly come up with an equation that tells us the y in terms of the x. That equation encodes the y-intercept and the slope, but we don't even bother with all of that. The student found the answer more directly, perfectly valid. In this instance, all three strategies work out perfectly fine.